missed. Or did I? You're just going to have to watch and find out. But welcome back nonetheless. This is uh, part two of the last video. This one's going to be diving strictly. And uh, there may or may not be a possible world record fish in this video. We'll see. So stay tuned. First light, just launched the boat, taking a 45 minute trek up to the northern point of the island to pick up the rest of the crew so we can go out on the reef. 45 minutes later, a few blown out vertebrae from the waves on the point and the Uber finally arrived. Y'all order an Uber? So we finally arrived at Aristat and picked the spot, dropped the anchor, and everybody's getting their gear on, and I'm not gonna lie, I was a little excited. And for a couple reasons, but mainly, it's the first time I'm diving this spot. I've heard a lot of good stories. We weren't able to dive the spot in the past because the boat hadn't been up and we finally got it up. So uh, shout out to everybody that played a part in that and uh, jumped in and I was immediately blown away. Like the, the amount of life that's just on this reef, not just that, but like the amount of structure and the bottom was like Swiss cheese, you know, a lot of caves, a lot of places for big fish to hide and I was just blown away and clearly you can see. These uh, first couple of clips are going to be the amount of lobster that we saw on this trip, you know, and guess what? It was not lobster season and we're pretty good at following the regulations because at the end of the day it keeps the, the species, you know, thriving. So. It's just really good to see these guys out there in full effect. On this drift, came across a Nassau and a dog snapper. It was just hanging outside their little, uh, their little cave. And immediately, as soon as they saw us, they went inside and uh, tried to hide. Got down, looked inside. There was about an eight pound lobster right at the entrance. It was a tight hole, but uh, he was hanging out right at the front. And um, the grouper immediately tucked up into the corner. It was gonna be a hard shot. And even if we got the shot off, it was gonna be a hard extraction. The dog snapper was moving left and right and using that lobster as a shield, basically. And you'll see here in this clips. Get My spear was all the way in there. I could have just, but the lobster was in the way. I don't want to blast the lobster. And there's a Nassau in there too deep. There's a Nassau in there too deep. So after reassessing the situation, we decided not to shoot the grouper because it was probably going to get stuck and uh, the dog snapper could have could have lived to see another day and get a little bigger. So we started to dr do the drift again and uh, moved on. Here we had a nice visit from a spotted eagle ray, just a beautiful creature to observe. These next couple of clips are of all the fish that I took shots at and missed. Uh, you know, the adrenaline was still pumping and I was excited and, you know, I hadn't dove in a long time, still working out the kinks, getting warmed up, but uh, here you go.
Finally caught up with the rest of the crew. They were uh, drifting a little too fast for us, so uh, we finally caught up with them. They were working this ledge. I think it was about 60 feet of uh, ledge. This is in about 15 feet of water depth. But I uh, did a dive on the start of the ledge, and right at the end of my breath hold, I noticed a very sizable dog snapper hidden way back in there. So I went back up to the surface and uh, did a quick breathe up because I didn't want him to get spooked. Went back down for a quick shot and uh, yeah, I missed. I missed. I was so livid. After that mess, I just regathered on the surface and I gave myself a pep talk because that would have been probably the sixth or seventh fish for the day that I missed. I hadn't put anything in the cooler and I just gave myself a pep talk and I'm like, I'm getting this fish. We uh, pretty much cornered that snapper, so there was people on either ends of the ledge. We were working the middle of the ledge, and he was just tucked up in there. And I was just trying to time it perfectly, and it worked out. Got down, gave it a good shot. It held. Uh, shout out to Morgan. He came down and backed me up so that the uh, spear didn't get sucked in and stuck. Sorry to leave you hanging there, Dan. My hands are a little tied up. I'll get you on the next one.
shot that fish into the boat and I was just ecstatic. Uh, my heart was racing. Probably the biggest snapper I've shot to date. And I didn't know this at the time, but when I got back to base and I did some research, I looked up the world record pole sparing uh, stats and the record currently, I forgot who's held by, but it's uh, 19.3 pounds on pole spare biggest dog snapper ever shot and we weighed that fish when we got back and it was 17 and a half pounds so i would say that's pretty damn close i was excited about that let's get a nice up close and... oh, yeah. Yeah. put him on it yeah <laughs> <laughs> He's about 30, 30 yeah. inch. So I got one on the belt. You know, I'm feeling a little confident with my shots now. And we continued to drift, trying to put some more fish in the cooler, get some more dinner. And I pulled up on this spot, and out of the distance, I see maybe four or five sizable dog snappers. And they were keeping their distance. I didn't want to come up on them too quick and spook them. So I, uh, I just threw my flashlight, seeing if anybody would come in, and then I uh, seemed curious. He did not buy it, so I went down, got my flashlight, and before I know it, and I looked back, that snapper came right up to me, and I wasn't even ready for it. My spear wasn't loaded, so I, tr I didn't even do a breath hold, but I still attempted to chase it. But seeing as I didn't do a breath hold, I was already running low on oxygen, so I didn't really get a chance to shoot him. But Hey, he's still out there. He's getting bigger for the next time, and uh, I'm excited to see him next time, see how big he got. This next clip's of uh, Marlin. He shot a nice Nassau. Uh, he called me over. I was probably like 50 yards away, and he called me over. And uh, I show up to the spot, I'm like, where's the fish, man? You called me over for nothing. And then I just see him dive on it, and he put a nice solid shot in it. It went down and backed him up, and we got it out with no problems. Hey, just drop the anchor. Okay. Hey, stay here, stay here. He's coming up. Yes, sir.
heading back with a nice little escort from the Hilo, and uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it.